So now that we've looked at the meaning of const, it's time to talk about passing arguments into functions and methods. So let's go back to our code and let's assume that I have a function that I want to pass an object of type foo into. How should I go about doing this? And what would be the different meanings of passing things in different ways? So the first option is to just pass the object by value. When we talked about classes and the special methods that were on them, we talked about the fact that this is invoking a copy constructor. So the advantage of passing things this way is the fact that you get a copy of it, you can do whatever you want to it, and the outside code isn't going to ever know about the changes that you made. Of course, the obvious downside to this is that if the object you pass in is large, then you have a lot of overhead in copying these things. In the case of, of this class, it has one n and one double. It's probably not a big deal. But there are lots of situations in C++ where you wind up passing around things like vectors, and vectors that have large numbers of elements in them. And passing those by value can really slow down your code. So most of the time, when you are passing an object, you're not going to pass it this way. Now, even you know, if you even if it's not going to slow you down, turns out as we'll see in the next video playlist when we talk about inheritance, there are other reasons why you probably shouldn't pass things this way. In this particular usage, turns out that adding const here is of only minimal significance because you pass this in as a copy of the original object. The fact that you can't change it locally, well, it's a nice safety net for the local usage, but the outside code doesn't care one way or the other because it got, you got a copy. You can't change the outside value, even if it's not const. In C, the way that you get around making large copies or copies of large objects when you pass them is to pass a pointer to things. Now, we pass pointers not only to prevent ourselves from making large, to make, from making copies of the large objects, but also to allow us to change the values. Because when we do this, we have the ability to do something like f set a. Because it's a pointer, I use the arrow syntax, and I can you know, set it to whatever other value that I want here. Of course, we could prevent that. We could make it so that this was a const foo, and then we couldn't call set a, but we could call get a. The challenge with this approach of passing pointers is that when I call this method, I have to take the address of the thing that I'm passing in. Okay, maybe that's not a horrible thing to have to do. In some ways, I know there was a time when I viewed this as a positive because it makes it very clear that you're passing a pointer and that this thing could be mutated. And there is a certain advantage to that. The, the having to take the address of makes you aware of the fact that the thing that you're passing in is susceptible to mutation. Of course, if the thing was declared as constant, then, well, it couldn't actually be mutated. You just had to put an ampersand there. And the other significant thing is that if you are passing in something that is the result of a function, so it's not a value like f, it's something that you got and it's kind of a temporary type of thing, this won't work. And the reason it won't work is because you can only take the address of things that actually have a valid memory location. And the result of something that comes back from a function is potentially, it's what's referred to as uh, an R value. It's not an L value, and you can't take the address of it. So there are some limitations to passing around pointers. The other option would be to pass this as a reference. 
Now, when you pass in a reference to something, you don't have to take its address. You just pass the thing in. And of course, the code on the other side now can change this. And this is actually, once again, I mentioned that I kind of liked the passing of pointers. And there was a period of time when I was unhappy with the fact that with references, you can pass something and not realize that you're passing a reference and it can be mutated. While that hasn't changed, I have to say that, that I've come around to believing that the, there's a net benefit to this. When you pass a reference, you don't have the overhead of copying. Uh, in the implementation, it's probably taking a pointer anyway. But also inside of this function, I don't have to use arrows. I could call the methods using the regular dot notation. But a lot of times, you actually don't want to pass your references like this. You're going to pass them as const references. Turns out if you pass it as a regular reference, once again, you have to have something that's an L value so that it can be mutated. If you pass a const reference, though, you can pass something that's more temporary uh, because the compiler knows that you're not going to be able to uh, to make changes to it. You're only going to be able to call const methods on it. And so it turns out that there are lots of situations where you will wind up passing things as const references. Indeed, pretty much if you are passing an object type into a function, the only times when you won't pass by a const reference are situations where you actually need a copy that you're going to be mutating. Okay, well, if you need a copy that you're going to be mutating, you'll pass it this way. If you are passing something through, um, yeah, in C++, I have a hard time coming up with a, a good reason. I'm sure there are reasons why you will want to pass pointers. Uh, generally, you pass pointers because of ownership of memory, and I guess that could be the case. For example, this function is supposed to deallocate this pointer. Okay, then you actually need the pointer to it. But the vast majority of the time, you're going to want a reference. If it is, if you're actually going to mutate it such that the outside code should experience the mutation, you'll pass it as a regular reference. If you are not going to mutate it, you're going to pass it as a const reference. As I alluded to earlier before, we're going to see the additional reasons why you want to use references here in the next video playlist when we talk about inheritance and polymorphism.